Welcome back. And it is time that we cover another version of XSS attack, which is called stored XSS. In the previous video, we covered the reflected XSS, and this is pretty much the same thing. It is the same vulnerability, just this time our code will get stored on the server side. And it is more dangerous because everyone that visits that page from the time that we injected our JavaScript code will also run that code. You don't have to send them any link or anything else. The code will run by itself as soon as they visit that page. And we already know where we can find the example of stored XSS, so let us just go to our Metasploitable IP address. In the DVWA, and let us log in. As usual, make sure that your burp suit is running and make sure that the intercept is turned off. I will zoom this in so we can see everything better and let us first navigate to the DVAWS security and check low right here. After we do that, let us submit and go to the stored XSS. So once again, this is the same vulnerability. We want to inject JavaScript code in user input fields. So what do we got here inside of our application? Well, it asks for name and message. Hmm. Vulnerability stored cross-site scripting. And why is this stored? Well, if we take a look at down here, it seems that someone already made a comment. Name is test. And the message or comment says, this is a test comment. And you might already see why this is stored. It is already on the page. And anyone that visits this page will also see this comment. So this is something that everyone that loads the page will also load this comment as a string. But what happens if we try to, for example, input JavaScript code? Will they also load that? Yes, they will. Let me show you an example. First, let us create a regular comment. So I'm just going to type Alexa and hello there, can you see me? And let's sign guestbook. And we can see right here our comment has been added. So everyone will also be able to see this. But what happens if we, for example, try to inject JavaScript code? Let's go with simple alert script. So script alert. And if we continue typing, we will notice that we cannot really type anymore in this field. So it could be that this field is limited to only certain amount of characters. So let's just leave that on test. And let's try to inject the code here. If I go onto the script, then alert, and I alert one. And I closed the script tags. Here we can input the entire script. So let's sign guestbook, and our JavaScript code executes. There is no user input filtering, therefore, since we are on low level, we will inject a simple code as alert1. Now, the good part about this is that now, since this comment has been added to this list, every time we visit that page, every time they will execute our code, or we will execute our code. So we don't have to type it once again as we had to with XSS reflected. Remember, if we type inside of the reflected a simple alert script, it will execute, but once we change a page and go back to the XSS reflected, there is no code running. However, on stored, we will run this code every time. And that is why it is more dangerous. For example, if you did the same attack as from the previous video where we stole cookies, if you inject that code here, then anyone that visits this page, their cookie will be sent to you. And you can then perform session hijacking or something else if cookies aren't configured correctly. And this will also happen if we log out of the page. For example, if I go log out and I go back to the page and go back to the access stored, this executes once again. Now, if this starts getting annoying because you want to start testing other examples as well, what you can do is you can go to setup right here and create or reset database. Once you click on this button, navigate back to XSS stored, 
you will no longer have the comments that we added in this video. You will only have this test comment that is there by default. Okay, great. Now let us take a look at the medium level security. So if I go on medium, submit, go back to the access is stored, and I try to input right here, hmm, it still seems to be limited characters. So we can't type longer words than this. Let's give it a try right here. So script alert one. And here we can name test. Hmm. It doesn't work. It seems that we get these slashes before our single quotes. So let's take a look at the source code just to see what is happening inside of our fields. And it tells us right here in the comments that this code right here sanitizes the message input, or in other words, the comment input. And this sanitizes or filters the name input. So it seems that we have this HTML special chars function onto our comment. And usually once you have that, there will be no XSS vulnerability since it filters all the characters that you can use to perform XSS attack. So most likely this part doesn't have any vulnerability. So message input or comment input is not something that we are going to try to attack. But what about this name input? It only has this string replace regular script with empty space, which we saw in the previous video, we can simply just bypass this with capital script tag. But there is another problem that we encounter. We cannot specify more than a couple of characters in the name field. Is that something that we can bypass? Well, if I type like this, I will not be able to type more than this, but if I go and inspect element of this page, I find the name input right here, and I can do that by going right here on dev, navigating to here, navigating to form, then from the form, this table, and I want to select this name input right here. So let us give it a try and see which one it is. It is this first one. And if I click on this last arrow, we can see right here that once we select the name input field, right here we got the max length of 10. Is that something that we can change? Well, let's give it a try. If I select that and instead of 10, I type 100, press enter, and I try to continue typing, well, now it works. We navigated to this field, we found the input name field, and it said the max length was 10, but we just added another zero, and now we can type even more characters. So let's give it a try. Remember, the only filtering that is inside of the name field is the script tag, so let us make it capital. And here we can type anything since we know that this is most likely not vulnerable to the access attack. And if I click on sign guestbook, there it is. Here is our access vulnerability. And that is all about stored access. It is completely the same as the reflected access, just this will get stored on the server page. And anyone will load it once visiting that page. Great. Now that we covered access, in the next video, I want to talk about a small vulnerability that many penetration testers skip when testing for web application vulnerabilities, and that is called HTML injection. And we're also going to mention why we should never skip checking for the HTML injection. See you in the next video.